In this video, we start the software portion of the project to read this analog 16 channel analog to digital converter over a SPI interface. The hardware part seems to be mostly done and seems to be working reasonably well. Where um, you know, we wrote the uh, Verilog code, we instantiated it to a Polar FPGA, Polar Fire FPGA on an Icicle dev board, and connected it up to an eval board for the analog to, to digital converter. And we're probing it, it looks good. If you want to see any of the hardware stuff, it's in my uh, Polar Fire Icicle playlist. There are all these Polar Fire Icicle 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, whatever. Yeah. So today we start with Soft Console, and we're going to be basing this on a Blinky that was developed earlier, which is also in this Polar Fire playlist early on, something like this. Okay, I think that's it. So um, let's bring look, Soft Console. So this is a project I worked on for the Blinky. Launch it, left click. This is the code for the, for the soft console. Um, and so let's see, what we wanna do is do a little bit of work. So the first thing we need to do is, um, uh, Let's see. It's been a while since I've looked at this. Excuse me for a moment while I figure out what's going on. Here, I think it's this guy. Here. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to define some address locations. Well, this is probably done with a define or something else, but I'm gonna do it with this here. So the uh, Polar Fire has an APB bus that's located at address uh, with the most significant nibble at four. Um, so I put up my Blinky at uh, the lowest part of that address space. Did we go to Libero one last time? And we go into the fig peripherals block. Um, I can see this address generator. And we've connected, let's see if we move first of all. We follow this line here from 4000 or from whatever. That goes to our blinky. And, and here is our spy interface. We follow that and we connected that up to 4,400 range. So now we go back to soft console and as we said, 4,400. And addresses are 32 bit value, uh, the address, they're 32 bit register space. So they go up by four. So let's write a few of them out. And so this is, this is ID register. This is a scratch register. And this is an enable reset this enable register oops goes by four and then we skip forward to forty forty which is the ADC analog to digital converter base address for 16 
values. Um, so now let's, let's I guess give it nice names here. Let's get ADC, ADC spy ID. ADC spy scratch. Okay. Okay. We'll leave that one there. I change these to address. The last one here, it's a spy um, base. this guy here. So again, this, we are leveraging the Blinky example. And I'll do hopefully minimal changes that to get this to do something useful. Okay. Um, looks pretty good to me. So now that we're in this while loop, see so we get to this point whenever putty sends a message over the UART so what we when we get that message what I want to do is I want to to um, ID and local equals C V and then I want to write that to the to the UART, which we did in a previous example. I'm not a big fan of multiple lines just to meet eighty characters. Boundaries. All right. And uh, so we have a value. So we should be able to do what an S print F. Um, let's call it uh, temp string. And we're going to say ID equals zero X percent X um, slash N. What do you think? Let's take that's a power tool feature. Um, let's scroll up to here and call it a U int eight T temp string called, um, oh, what do we want to call it? 80 bits, 132. Let's make it 128 bits.
256 bytes of uh, message space. So I don't want to overflow it in this silly example, and I don't want to do much for trying to protect it. So we'll temp string here, it's to here, and we send that out. And so hopefully it'll send out our ID. And so that's the first little modification that we're going to do. Let's see. Wait, wait. wait. Now they want size of the message. That's really uh, strln um, string uh, plus one, right? So I'm just following their lead. Well, they wanted a size off, um, and that came out of the reference design. And so the string length plus one contains the uh, null character. All right, so let's do a control S. Um, yeah, let's see if this actually compiles. So, what did we compile? We'll go to this project here, select him with a left click, right click, build project, left click. And it's building. So this is a live stream. I have not done this code before. Um, so you'll see all of my mistakes as I go forward. Um, didn't get me yet. No errors here. Um, and so now let's go to run, left click, debug configurations, left click. Um, we've got everything set up with this MPFS, uh, MMUR interrupt. That was set up in a previous project, and left click on debug. Okay, so we're in this debug mode, and so right now we're paused at the start of the program. What we'll need to do is click resume, but before we do that, um, let's connect up the uh, the uh, UART to the laptop. So first, let's go to Device Manager. It's okay. Go to Ports. Click on the down arrow. We've got these ports, of which the Flash Pro is the Flash Pro I'm using to control the um, the uh, icicle. I don't know what these Bluetooth ones are. Um, so now I'm going to connect up the UART. We should see more ports. And here we've got all these Silicon Labs quad uh, CP2108. Um, many of them, of which I'm going to take the one associated with the uh, interface zero, which is on COM 18. So now I'm going to start up PuTTY. Okay. Uh, interesting about Volta. All right. Um, so in PuTTY, we want a serial communications port. We want it on COM 18. We set it up with a speed of 115, 200. And I think that's about right. Let's click on open. Okay, now we've got a PuTTY. It's hopefully talking. Let's see what we need to do. 
Uh, let's hit an enter key. Let's hit a, a number three. I'm getting nothing. That's right. Because so now we've got putty there. Now that what we want to do is go back and click on resume with a left click. Now we bring up putty again. Let's see if we get anything. Nothing. Okay, I just needed to be patient. Let's let's hit on a, a one, two, three, four. So it's printing out this ID register here. Which is just a bite. And we are not getting a uh, 32 bit value. A UART file. I don't want to be there. I want to be in this file. This E51C is where I've been modifying the code. We gotta get this to work. Um, let's just double check back in a little bit. Four zero 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 oh four XX. Those look nice. Um, print statement. We want it to be an 8 bit value. So let's format it to be an 8 bit value. <laughs> there we go. Um, an 8 bit hex value, an 8 nibble hex value. Um, this should looks like it's converting it right. Um, Okay, save this and build it again. Click on the green arrow. You say OK. Let's 
it stop and I think it should run now. Lift click. Resume, left click, body. Getting ten. Why are we getting ten? Um, so let's get back to their code on E fifty one. It's all fine. I'm kind of happy with the address. ADC spy ID adder. ADC spy ID adder. Pointer, 32-bit number. These are pointers to 32-bit numbers. I think the typecasting looks reasonably okay. Um, let's go back to Libero. Okay, so we've checked this and we like the address at four, four zeros, four, Oh, oh, so let's take a look at the code. So that would be in um, design hierarchy, user VHDL files. Right here, oh, the spy interface, double left click. So here's the code. Um, I really wanted the ID register to be returned as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight and we're only getting one zero just nothing like what we want um, so when we're reading back from the bus if the address is greater than 40 then we're reading the array which is like one of the 16 entries for the adc if we're less than that then we look and see if we're at zero, zero. And if it's zero, zero, uh, those, if the lower byte is zero, zero, we'll go back to Libero for a second. Here, the lower byte is zero, so four, zero, zero, 400. And we should be reading the uh, We should be reading the constant of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, if we read back with a four, zero, four, we should read back a one. Yeah, and if we read back an eight, we should be reading back a scratch pad, which is defaults to um, zero, I believe. We should have put a different value in. So let's go back to here. Control C. And let's uh, read back all three of those control registers. ID. Um, Reset. So I'm referring to it as local if it's in the um, local uh, memory of the processors. I got these picked up.
Well, so we should have those three negatives. Um, let's put it in change for a moment. And say, mu int. Um, so here, take this example. So let's say a digit number. And so we want to load that into the scratch pad and then read the scratch pad back. Okay. that and just right. call s save it and click on the left click on the hammer Okay, the build finished. And now let's stop. So stop the running program. Okay. Run before three, two, one. Now I'll click left click on the uh, green uh, triangle. Wait for the little resume arrow to show up. Okay, here. Okay, I've got the resume arrow. Let's left click on that. And let's go to body. Left click on body. And, uh, so it just came alive. Let's hit a character. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I think I knew what I did be wrong before. <laughs> and didn't want to believe it, but it, it was. So the reason it messed up before um, is that in this print statement, in this S print statement, I forgot to put in any of the... Uh, variables that we want to print out. Control Z, put it back. 
And so, uh, in reality, um, this thing is actually working. Um, so you can see that the ID register is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Reset is uh, maybe I should call this enable. Uh, let's call it enable. Control H, does that work? Uh, erase set. Uh, search. What happened? Well, that's kind of boring. <laughs> Control F. Um, reset. Uh, well, find. Yeah, what was that before? It had a search. I don't know. Glad I'm here though. We're going to replace him. Um, well, find the next one. Uh, find the next one. Replace and find, replace, find, replace, and find. Okay, close. Um, all right, so that's just a variable change. I bet we could have done it with a, um, bet we could have clicked on this and uh, done one of these uh, refactors try that next time okay so but going back to putty again i'm really super stoked that we are getting the id value we're getting the enable and we're getting the scratch to be what we wrote into it for the scratch which is super awesome yeah Yeah, so, so the next thing is, though, now we're going to see if we can read those ADC registers. I'm kind of stoked at the moment. Um, copy. So now let's cruise down to every time in this while loop, every time a key produces a key, but he sends a character, we fall into this loop. Not sophisticated, but not bad either. And now... Um, uh, edit, see, control V, control V. We're going to do something here. We're going to do something. Fifteen. We want to do something 15 times for I. I uh, wonder if I is going to conflict with anybody. Yeah, that should be safe. Uh, int I equals zero. So I'm gonna be a semi. Uh, I is less than a 16 semi I uh, plus. All right. And now we want So we want uh, to find you int 32 T uh, voltage equals this work. Contents base plus uh, I think we're just gonna call it um what do we call this type uh, like this
Okay, so we have a tip pointer starting at the base, and then we are going to bring the voltage in and creeps so increment it, which should increment it by four. And then what we want to do is um, do some sort of string print here. Three uh, percent. The so we're gonna put an ii there. We don't want any of this. Let's get rid of it. I I I. Print the voltage. I mean the index number. And we have to print voltage. And hex. Okay, so that bumps our temp string. And then we want to do these TX things right here. Got the string length, temp string. We're printing it out to the UART. Okay. Fingers crossed, um, control S, click on this, terminate. That's good. Um, click on the hammer, left click. Piling. Oh, what was that? Let's do something different, but I'll try to adjust this. I'm getting a little messed up in pointers and super pointers and everything else. Let's do a uh, control C. Um, battery saving it up. Why don't I have a battery? Why, why, why? Oh, oh dear. Let's see. Um, let me see if I can figure out how to get all mm -hmm. supply out of this guy. Listen to my setup too badly. It's amazing how these cords can get so tangled up. Well, almost there. Let's see if we can get an outlet. Oops, scope probes. Okay. All right, let's see. Can we reach? Can you reach? Let's see, you go around. So this And you win. <laughs> Fantastic. So, so I put this pointer to equal to that pointer. That seems like a fair assessment. Control S. I'll click on the hammer. Okay. 
And I always like to look for warnings that come scrolling across. Because um, C lets you do things that maybe you shouldn't be doing. We saw another warning come across. It still discards it. I kind of like what I did. I feel good about it. Um, assignment discards volatile, so he's volatile. Oh. Discards volatile. Hmm. Let's think about it for a while. I think, um, I think we should be fine. Let's click on left click on this run. Let's hope for the best. Hmm. I don't really like what I've got here. Okay, so now we're paused here. And what I really wanted was to um, have the deaf at the end of this, so it's going to do it might combine some funny letters. Let's give it a shot. I didn't like that. Let's terminate this guy. Let's, let's do this. Let's see. Oops. Six, six, six. Okay. Save that. I don't know the address is. I hope. Okay, so those are all the addresses. And, uh, let's pick the one. This one. Which one? C.
alt forward slash. Here's less. Um, it's not running. Hit the hammer again. It looks like it compiles. Um, hit the run button. Left click. To compile one more time. Seems the way just going on. Got to that, got to that. Run. Debug configurations. Debug. Okay, now I don't know what was going on. Just I'm gonna click on resume. Hopefully everything keeps going. And then here we are. I think we should get a press one too. Here we go. And then we got the prompt. Press the Huh. We're getting uh, uh, 8,000 all the time. I expected that for the lower bits, and I expected this 8 to be changing. I made a change recently to the uh, bear lock code. Did it not get here? Parallel code, parallel code. It's down here. Should be address. And that should work. It's too strange. It's too unbelievable. I'm suspecting somehow I did not synthesize with this latest change because the previous version I would have expected to have an eight here. So I think we're doing good, but I'm going to have to resume after I synthesize, resynthesize. Shutting down for now. Shift. Print screen.